the anatomy and morphology of frogma so let us try to understand this one <clears throat> so what is the name of the species of which frog is present in which species tigrina clear no genus is rana class amphibians and phylum is chordates clear no so rana tigrina is the most common species in india so wherever you want you can find this frogs ma so they are cold blooded or pikilotherms clear no cold blooded organisms you can also call them as pikilotherms ah so this slide is like this ma next slide is okay so they can change the color to hide from their enemies the nature is called as uh, camouflage and it is also called as mimicry are able to understand so they can change the color of their skin <clears throat> so during summer and winter they undergo estivation which is called as summer sleep and a hibernation which is called as winter sleep so to protect from extreme heat and extreme cold clear no ma so they go deeper into the burrows of the land and they take rest in the winter season as well as in summer season so summer sleep is called what it is called estivation and winter sleep is called as hibernation so <clears throat> next the skin is moist smooth and slippery due to mucus so a layer of mucus will be present on the skin ma that is the reason why the skin of the frog will be slippery and it will be moist and smooth also so dorsal dorsal side back side is olive green so generally general color is green color ma on the back side and with a dark irregular spots ventral side is pale yellow that is on the stomach region side it is uh, having which color ma it is having pale yellow color frog never drinks water but uh, absorbs it through the skin it doesn't drink water ma and it absorbs the required water through the skin porous skin itself so body is divisible only into head and trunk head is present trunk is present clear no so neck and tail they are absent but in the case of cockroach we studied that uh, thorax also will be present and front region of the thorax we can call it as a prothorax so prothorax itself is modified into neck in the case of uh, cockroach but here there is no concept of neck here so only body is present and sorry head is present and trunk is present thorax cavity is not present understood no ma so therefore there is no concept of neck here so above the mouth a pair of nostrils is present ma clear no nostrils responsible for respiration so this is about the basic structure of this frog so this is the trunk region head region eyes are present and behind the eyes you can find some vibrating structure which is called as a tympanum for sensing the vibrations and two pairs of limbs are present ma for frontal uh, limbs you can call them as four limbs and back limbs you can call them as hind limbs clear no so that's it these are some of the other parts which are given so thigh shank this region ankle foot toe and this foot it is divided into webs which is responsible for swimming also clear no ma and in the four limb you can find the hand fingers forearm and an upper arm a tympanum mouth and external nerves so all these are the parts which are present in the frog clear no so eyes are bulged and covered by a nictitating membrane that protects them while in water so this is an important point so where you will find this nictitating membrane nictitating membrane you will find in the case of frogs so what is meant by nictitating membrane ma so we use the goggles for swimming no so like this in the eyes of this frogs they have natural goggles and that uh, membrane structure that is called as nictitating membrane which helps to protect the eyes of the frog uh, from salt water or from fresh water clear no ma on either side of eyes have a membrane which is called as tympanum so behind the uh, eyes they have a vibrating structure so fully developed ears are not present in the case of frogs only a vibrating structure is present which is called as tympanum 
and when you, when any sound is produced this sound and goes and strikes this tympanum this tympanum will vibrate accordingly and uh, sensing that vibrations the frog will understand what is happening in its surroundings so that is the function of tympanum clear no so four limbs four digits means four fingers are present hind limbs five digits five fingers are present so they help in swimming walking leaping and burrowing burrowing means going inside the uh, burrows of the land in the holes of the land clear no hind limbs are larger and muscular than the fore limbs so back limbs are you can you can say the legs back legs of this uh, frog they are very strong when compared to the front ones so feet have webbed digits that help in swimming webbed structure means what so some this kind of structure will be present clear no web web type of structure will be present with help them in uh, swimming of this frog clear no then frogs exhibit sexual diamorphism this is another important bit so what is meant by sexual diamorphism so males and females they are not uh, same in size and shape shape may be similar size is not similar so this is called as sexual diamorphism are you able to understand ma so different in shape as well as size so male frogs have sound producing vocal sac and also a copulatory pad and the first digit of the four limbs which are absent in the case of males so in the front limbs of this uh, what you call frogs there are two limbs from two pairs of limbs are there front limbs and back limbs are present hind limbs in the front limbs so these uh, uh, frogs they have a, a pad which is called as nuptial pad and this is also called a copulatory pad also so during copulation with the help of this pad which is present on the uh, four limbs of this frog it holds the female frog are you able to understand ma for holding the female frog this nuptial pad will be helpful for this male frog okay and they have a vocal sac also clear no vocal sac means what in rainy season and winter season or uh, some in rainy season mostly you can see frogs will be singing some songs understood no ma what will winner ipudu na frogs they will sing songs and for singing the songs this vocal sacs are responsible so they sing songs more beautifully so that they can attract the females understood no ma so this structure which you are finding here this is that vocal sac with which they produce the sound are able to understand so csi ground undi kada csi grounds rajareddy street so when i was some uh, 9th or 10th i hope or 7th classes that was totally filled with water one time because of huge water and lakhs of lakhs of frogs were present so all of them they were singing the songs like this with the help of this vocal sax understood no that's it <clears throat> okay so and when when you see the digestive system of this frogma it consists of elementary canal and digestive glands what is meant by elementary canal the canal which opens from the base of the mouth up to the anus the total tube we can call it as elementary canal so elementary canal is present in frogs also and you will have some digestive glands also which secretes the enzymes for digestion and mostly hydrochloric acid is produced by this glands clear no so elementary canal is a short one because of frogs are carnivores and hence the length of the intestine is reduced are able to understand sima in the case of herbivores length of the intestine will be very large and in the case of non vegetarian animals that is carnivores length of the intestine will be very small so even in lions also in uh, cats also in uh, what you call tigers also hyenas also you will find the length of this uh, intestine is very small but uh, human intestine it is nearly 6 meters long no? but the length in the case of bigger animals like uh, cats and uh, in the case of uh, uh, lions and tigers it will be only of 2 meters are able to understand otherwise they eat only non vegetarian food no ma so fiber content is zero in non vegetarian food so if length of the intestine is very long constipation problem they also they have to face understood no ma they to require tablets for uh, going to motion so that is why for every carnivorous animals the length of the intestine will be very less clear no so next what is the uh, structure or openings in which one opening is open into the other that sequence is given here mouth mouth opens into buccal cavity we know what is meant by buccal cavity no ma the inside of the mouth is called as buccal cavity 
So then mouth open, the buccal cavity opens into pharynx. We know what is meant by pharynx, no? Then it opens into esophagus. Then it opens into stomach. Then intestine. Then rectum. Then finally cloaca. So this is the sequence in which the parts are arranged in the case of frog. And this sequence you should remember. So food is captured by bilobed tongue. tongue. So it means uh, tongue is divided like this, ma. So two lobes are present in the case of frog. Bilobed tongue. Even in the case of snakes also, you can find this bilobed tongue. Tongue is divided into two parts, no? That is called bilobed. Clear? So digestive glands, gastric glands secrete HCl, hydrochloric acid, and other gastric juices. So liver, what a liver does? It secretes bile juice. It is stored in the gallbladder. So bile is stored where, ma? Bile is stored in the gallbladder. Clear, no? So some, you can find some stones uh, falling in this uh, or developed in this gallbladder also, no? where this bile juice will be stored. It, it will be just like a packet, packet which stores this bile juice. And if your food habits are very horrible, stones will be created in this uh, gallbladder. And this storage of bile will become a very big problem. Understood, no? So that is the function of gallbladder for storing of bile juice secreted by liver. Even in human beings also, same condition. So pancreas, it secretes pancreatic juices containing digestive enzymes. So this is about the digestive system of the frog. Gastric glands are present which secrete HCL and other juices. Liver secretes bile. Bile is stored in gallbladder. Pancreas secretes pancreatic juices responsible for digestion. Clear, Nama? And here, partial digestion occurs in the stomach by HCL and other gastric juices. Okay? So, in the case of human beings, we have a complete digestive system. Food is digested completely. But here, what happens? Partial digestion happens. And that partially digested food, that we can call it as a chime. Clear, Nama? Partially digested food. So, this chime is passed from stomach to another region, which is at the starting of the intestines, which is called as duodenum. Okay? So, what is meant by duodenum? This is the first part of the small intestine. So, from the stomach, chime enters into duodenum. Clear, Nama? So, duodenum receives bile from the gallbladder and other pancreatic juices from the pancreas through a common bile duct. Clear, no? Common bile duct means what? Through this duct only, bile juice is also released, pancreatic juices also they are released. Are you able to understand, ma? So these juices, they enter into the duodenum and again there, complete digestion of food will take place. So digestion of food is taking place in two stages. First in stomach also, next in intestines also. Clear, no, ma? So bile emulsifies fat. What is meant by emulsification? Emulsification means it is mixing of two non-mixable substances. For example, oil and water, you can never mix them, no? Clear, no? Fat it is completely made up of oil only, no? Clear, no? So, fat and water are mixed with the help of bile, which are immixable. They are not mixable, no? That process is called as emulsification. So, in the case of frogs, you can find this uh, emulsification process of, with the help of bile. So here I have written, emulsification means what? Process of mixing non-mixable substances. So mixing of fat as well as water. That is happening with the help of bile. Clear, no? So pancreatic juice digest carbohydrates and uh, proteins. So what is the function of pancreatic juice, ma? This is another important bit. Function of pancreatic juice is digestion of carbohydrates as well as proteins. So digestion completes in the intestine. So, finger-like villi and microvilli in the intestine absorb the digested food. So, in the inside the intestines, there will be so small finger-like projections, hair-like projections inside the intestine. So, what these, inter these fingers they will do, these hairs what they will do, they will absorb the digested food. So, undigested solid waste moves into rectum and again it passes into the cloaca. So, cloaca is of the final opening in the case of frogs. Are you able to understand? So, undigested. Still, see, 100% of food can never be digested. Do you know that? 100% of food can never be digested in human body also. So, definitely there will be some food which is undigested. Clear, no? So, this undigested food, it moves into the rectum and finally passes out through 
another region which is called as a cloaca the final opening in the case of frog clear that's it so skin is aquatic respiratory organ what is meant by aquatic respiratory organ ma aquatic respiratory organ means what uh, frog is an amphibian no ma it can live on water also it can live on land also so when it is present in water it has to respire no and this respiration is possible with the help of skin so that is called as aquatic respiration and another name for aquatic respiration is cutaneous respiration also so dissolved oxygen in the water is exchanged to skin by the process which is called as a diffusion okay even in the lungs also the exchange of gases takes place with the help of diffusion only no even in plants also some of the water is transported to the higher parts through diffusion process only are you able to understand so when it is present on land buccal cavity skin and lungs they are responsible for respiration understood no and this kind of respiration we can call it as uh, pulmonary respiration understood no so when it is present in water it will respire through skin when it is present in uh, land it respires through buccal cavity skin and lungs one is called cutaneous respiration and the second one is called as pulmonary respiration okay no so lungs <clears throat> how many lungs are there two elongated so lungs are they given in the figure ma so see here this is the structure of the lung so this is the first one and this is the second one are you able to understand ma that is the shape of the lungs so two elongated pink colored sac like organs present in the thorax are you able to understand ma so uh, two elongated and what is the color of this uh, lungs ma pink colored lungs so they are present somewhere in between the head and the that actually thorax is not present in the case of uh, uh, what you call frogs ma just for your understanding he is saying that what is the position of the lungs somewhere in between the head and the trunk in the middle so these lungs are arranged okay so then what is the movement of air ma air enters through the nostrils and from there it enters into the buccal cavity and it enters into the lungs are able to understand see ma here there is one point on land this frog it can respire through skin in water also and skin on land also skin is responsible for respiration on both on water also as well as land also but buccal cavity it is used only in the case of land only this is another point which you should remember okay so during estivation and hibernation gaseous exchange that takes place through purely skin itself because it will shut its mouth and it will sleep are you able to understand ma nostrils also doesn't work because uh, burrows they are present in very deeper layers of the uh, what you call land no ma so nostril respiration is not possible so they will respire only with the help of skin only while they are sleeping in summer season as well as in winter season so this is another bit which can be remembered clear no next circulatory system so this is a very beautiful concept of phragma it has two types of circulatory system so one is blood vascular circulatory system and the second one is called as lymphatic system understood no and in blood vascular system we have uh, three parts one is heart blood vessels and blood in lymphatic system we have lymph lymph channels and lymph nodes okay now what is meant by lymph here lymph means sima when blood enters into the organs of the frog when blood enters into the organs of the frog and blood enters through arteries no ma and deoxygenated blood is collected by veins this you should have studied previously no oxygenated blood is supplied from the heart to the organs there the process of digestion may happen inside the cell clear no and from there deoxygenated blood will be carried by veins but in the case of frogs what happens is some of the organelles of this blood they are left behind they are not carried by the veins so this leftover blood that is called as lymph understood no the blood which is remaining or which is not carried by the veins that we can call it as lymph so this lymph is separately collected by another type of system which is called as lymphatic system are able to understand blood has many organelles no blood has white wbcs also blood has rbcs also neutrophils also mesophils also many organelles will be present so some of them they are left behind in the organs 
so all the organelles of this blood they cannot be collected by the veins in the case of frogs remaining parts of the blood that we can call it as lymph understood now this lymph is uh, collected by separate mechanism which is called as lymph lymphatic system and lymphatic system consists of lymph lymph channels and lymph nodes understood now so this lymphatic system collects this remaining part of the blood and again it is supplied to the main vein malli ekkadiki supply chestundi idi again it is supplied to the main vein through another type of uh, vibrating structure which is called as lymphatic heart okay so main heart of the frog is separate and the frog has another structure for uh, pumping this lymph and that is called as lymph heart and four lymph hearts they are present in the case of frog artham avutundi kada ma we are not discussing about main heart we are discussing about another heart which is responsible for pumping this lymph which is called as lymph heart and how many lymph hearts are present four lymph hearts are present so that system we can call it as lymphatic system understood ma so all the details i have written here you can go through all of them so lymph means what clear to white to fluid made up of white blood cells that that attack bacteria in the blood are you able to understand ma so lymph is not red in color it is white in color or maybe transparent also and it is mostly made up of what ma white blood white blood corpuscles it means white blood corpuscles totally they are not collected by veins okay and some of the serum and some of the wbc they make the lymph okay that's it so see here lymph is a combination of plasma plus lymphocytes and they are collected through lymph vessels ma all these lymph vessels unite to form large lymphatic vessels they open into rhythmically contractile sac called lymph heart and how many hearts are present four lymph hearts they are present understood no ma so this lymph is connected by lymph channels lymph channels opens into lymph nodes all these lymph nodes they are connected to a respiratory uh, vibrating rhythmically vibrating structure called lymph heart and this lymph heart pumps this lymph into the main vessel main veins okay that's that is the functioning which is happening here so in the figure you can see my here so from the heart blood is carried to arteries arteries take the blood to organs and in some organs uh, from the organs total blood is connected by the vein system but there will be some leftover blood you know ma leftover organelles and here you are seeing some pink color lines so no? they are called as lymphatic nodes and lymphatic channels which are connected to different organs understood no ma and that is again connected and this forms the lymph system and lymph heart again pumps this blood into the vein system this is the arrangement of this uh, circulatory system so it consists of blood circulatory system as well as lymphatic circulatory system artham avutundi kada difference that's it clear now ma so leftover components are collected and lymph system finally connected to veins that's it okay so then circulatory system some more properties it is closed to type we know what is meant by closed to type now ma so for open type of system we have made a mnemonic which is called as anthenoma so frogs doesn't fall into this and thing understood no they are having veins also veinlets also arteries also everything is present clear no so three chambered heart two atria and one ventricle is present and it is covered by pericardium so a membranous layer present on the above of the heart that is called as pericardium so what is meant by pericardium a double membranous structure present as a covering to the heart of this frog that is called as pericardium clear no so double walled sac containing heart and roots of greater vessels so double layered uh, membrane structure that is called as pericardium so heart is covered by pericardium so how many chambers are present totally three chambers two atria are present one ventricle is present okay atrium is the singular form atria is the plural form so then a triangular structure called sinus venosus joins the right atrium okay ma so on the right atrium you will find a triangular structure which is called as sinus venosus so in the figure here you can see ma 
this is the sinospinosis clear no so this triangular structure you are seeing here no this one is called as sinus venosus and what is the function of this sinus venosus ma it is doing the function of pacemaker pacemaker means what it regulates how many times a heart to should uh, contract and relax in one second or in one minute understood no so for example if you are uh, running you require more oxygen no ma and for more oxygen to be supplied to the different cells of your body heart to should pump the blood many times okay so who decides the number of uh, uh, functions of the heart that is decided by a structure which is called as pacemaker understood no and here this is sinus venosus it does the work of a pacemaker understood no that's it so and where is the arrangement of this pacemaker ma where this sinus venosus is just present it is present on the right atrium this is another important bit so it receives blood through major veins so uh, this sinus venosus this also requires blood no ma for its functioning and this blood is received through what it is received through major veins which is also called as vena cava so this structure that is called as vena cava there understood no next ventricle opens ventrally into a sac like structure which is called as conus arterio arteriorus in the pronunciation of the arteriosus clear no ma so ventricle opens into another sac like structure which is called as conus conus arteriosus and what is the function of this one ma the function of this conus arteriosus it is directing blood into the correct atrium because we have two atriums no ma two atria are present no? so how much of blood should enter into which atrium that is decided by this conus arteriosus understood no so these two functions you should remember no? they will not be asked in the examination no what is their function but just for your understanding what is the function of this different parts which are present okay so sinus venosus it acts as a pacemaker conus arteriosus it acts as directing the blood into the right atrium that is the function of this one clear no and what is meant by pericardium already i have written clear now this is the mechanism how blood transfers from it transfers from the heart into the arteries into the body parts same system clear circulatory system ah these are two important uh, bits more hepatic portal system and renal portal system so what is meant by hepatic portal system if there is a venous connection between liver and intestine there is a connection between liver and intestine no ma because the juices which are released by the liver they must be released into the intestine because in intestine only 100% uh, digestion happens no so if there is a connection between liver and intestine that kind of uh, system we can call it as hepatic portal system so hepatic portal system you can find in frogs understood no similarly renal portal system what is renal portal system connection between kidneys and the lower parts of the body are you able to understand kidney if it is connected to lower parts of the body then the type of connection we can call it as renal portal system so hepatic portal system renal portal system both are present in the case of frogs clear no ma that's it so blood what is a blood composed of so it is a form of plasma and rbcs wbcs and platelets so rbcs are nucleated this is one important point nucleated veins ma they are composed of nucleus and contains hemoglobin rbc contains hemoglobin no clear no so lymph lacks a few proteins and rbcs because we have studied that lymph mainly consists of what it consists of wbc and serum plasma understood them rbcs will not be present in lymph total rbcs they will be collected by veins only understood them some wbcs they are left over in the organs so main uh, lymph consists of wbcs and serum itself so lymph lacks a few proteins and rbcs red blood corpuscles they are not present in lymph that is why it is white in color what is the color of lymph white in color because of the presence of wbc absence of rbc clear so blood circulation is achieved by the pumping action of muscular heart this we know blood carries nutrients gases and water to the respective sites during the circulation this also we know 
clear number next excretory system it contains two kidneys two ureters one cloaca and one urinary bladder understood number how many kidneys two kidneys how many ureters two what is meant by ureter the tubes which are originating from the kidneys they are called as ureters two ureters are present clear number one cloaca is present so this ureters uh, in the case of uh, male reproductive system ureters directly open into cloaca in the female reproductive system of the flock ureters as well as ovary ducts also both of them they open into the cloaca separately understood number that we will study later so urinary bladder a bladder for storing urine that is also present clear ma kidney what is the shape of the kidney ma color is dark red and bean shape okay found posteriorly in the body cavity on both sides of uh, vertebral column what is meant by posteriorly ma so very closer to the dorsal region is called as posterior region dorsal region means back region no ma so they are not uh, 100% towards the dorsal region slightly towards the what you called uh, back region or dorsal region that is called as a posterior uh, position understood no so they are found posteriorly and on each side of the vertebral column it means on the vertebrates one is present on this side one is present on the other side in the figure you can see here no ma so this bean shaped reddish brown structures you are seeing no so these are the kidneys these are the kidneys and which are the ureters here you are seeing some uh, tubes which are passing no ma these are the ureters which are directly opens into the cloaca clear no so each kidney is formed of nephrons and another name for nephrons is uriniferous tubules also so kidneys are made up of nephrons only hmm? that's it next ureters emerge from the kidneys we know in males they act as uh, urinogenital duct clear no ma and which opens into the cloaca so in the males they are uh, responsible for urinogenital duct it means they are responsible for uh, releasing urine also and they are responsible for genital parts also which are responsible in copulation understood no ma so but in females this is one important even in uh, human beings also same concept is happening ma. in females ureters and ov duct they open separately in the cloaca understood no in the case of males the same ureters they function as urinogenital ducts but in the case of female frogs ureter tube is different ov ducts they are different and both of them they open into the cloak understood no that's it so urinary bladder what is the function of urinary bladder ma storing the urine that is the function of urinary bladder clear no thin wall wall of this urinary bladder is very thin so present ventral to the rectum which also opens in cloaca so what is the positioning of this urinary bladder ma it is present on the ventral side to rectum so these kind of small details also you should never miss ma because questions can be framed on them the also how question can be framed urinary bladder it is present first bit ventral to rectum second bit dorsal to rectum next uh, ventral to cloaca dorsal to clock like four bits four options can be framed understood no? so every detail you should not miss so it is present ventral to the rectum and also it opens into the cloaca so in the case of males how many tubes opens into the cloaca males two what are they urinogenital ducts that is ureters and the second one is the ure duct of urinary bladder also are able to understand but in the case of females Three, three tubes or three ducts open into the cloaca. What are they? One is ureter, second one is ov duct, and the third one is again urinary bladder. So that is important point. And a frog is a ureotelic animal. It means it releases uric acid. Frogs release what kind of nitrogenous waste? Ma, they release u u uric acid. That is why they are called as ureotelic animals. understood no? and this major uric acid it is uh, composed of nitrogen so that is why they are also called as nitrogenous waste salts okay so nitrogenous waste are carried by blood uh, into the kidney where it is separated and it is excreted understood no so this where we take this nitrogenous waste ma 
blood carries this nitrogenous waste into kidney and kidney releases this one through uh, what you call other parts like ureters as well as urinary bladders understood no which are opening into the cloaca clear so cloaca what so we are studying about the endocrine system in the case of phragma so endocrine glands what do they do endocrine glands they secrete hormones okay ma so how many endocrine glands are present pituitary thyroid parathyroid thymus pineal body pancreatic islets adrenals and gonads so these are the different endocrine glands which are present in the frog and what is their function function is producing hormones secreting of hormones so this placement of these glands is also given by here so you can see so this is the arrangement of adrenal gland gonads pancreas thyroid pituitary glands these are the arrangements which are given so total how many are there ma 1 2 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 seven and eight so eight endocrine glands are present okay so we need not study in detail about them so next we study about the nervous system which is present in the case of frog so nervous system of the frog we can divide into three types what are that central nervous system second one is peripheral nervous system and the third one is autonomic nervous system three types of nervous systems are present so central nervous system again it is divided into two types so first one is the brain and the extension of the brain which is called the spinal cord clear na ma peripheral nervous system again i can divide into two types cranial nerves and spinal nerves clear what is meant by cranial nerves ma cranial nerves means what the nerves which are starting from the back part of the brain they are called as cranial nerves and the nerves which are present in the spinal cord you can call them as spinal nerves so peripheral nervous system are two types cranial nerves as well as spinal nerves then we have the third type of nervous system which is called as autonomic nervous system so autonomic nervous system is again divided into two types so sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system so these are the nervous system which you are supposed to by heart clear no so next next coming to the different parts of the brain so brain of the frog we can divide into three types first one is the brain which is present in the front region which is called as fore brain clear na ma second one is called as mid brain the brain which is present in the middle region and the third one is called as hind brain or hind brain clear so fore brain again that is the brain which is present in the front region again i can divide it to three types what are they they contain olfactory lobes they contain paired cerebral uh, cerebral hemispheres and it contains diencephalon also clear na ma so three parts are present in the fore brain so what is the function of this olfactory lobes so this additional information just for your for your information i have written ma if you study like this you can remember it for a long time clear so olfactory lobes what is the function of this olfactory lobes they are responsible for the sense of smell clear ma and paired cerebral hemispheres are present and diencephalon is also present what is the function of diencephalon it connects the mid brain as well as the fore brain the middle brain and the fore brain they are connected by a connection which is called as diencephalon so these are the three parts which are present in the fore brain clear na ma then coming to mid brain mid brain contains a pair of optic lobes what is meant by pair of optic lobes ma pair means how many two optic lobes means so these are the parts which are responsible for vision which are responsible for sight clear no and the hind brain back side of the brain it consists it consists of two parts one is cerebellum and the next one is medulla oblongata so what is the function of cerebellum it is responsible for balancing structures clear no ma similarly in 
frog ear also behaves like a balancing structure now this is one important bit which you should remember not only this cerebellum ear also tympanum is present no? inside the tympanum there is internal ear for the frog we have external ears no but the frog has an internal ear are able to understand so this internal ear of the frog also behaves like a balancing structure my point is that still scientists do not have a clarity whether these ears whether they are responsible for uh, uh, hearing or ears are responsible for balancing still we don't know okay so we say that ears are responsible for both listening also hearing also as well as balancing also this is one point in the case of frog clear no so therefore the hind brain consists of cerebellum and medulla oblongata cerebellum is responsible for balancing and medulla oblongata it is the lowest part of the brain which is called as medulla oblongata so from this medulla oblongata only uh, what you call your spinal cord will be continued Are able to understand so these are the different functions and parts of brain of a frog okay next to see so cranial nerves what is meant by cranial nerves ma the nerves which are arising from the brain they are called as cranial nerves and how many pairs of cranial nerves are present in the frog 10 pairs of cranial nerves are present this may be an important bit okay so box brain is included in a bony brain box which is called as cranium so the box in which brain is present it is called as cranium so medulla oblongata passes out through the foramen magnum and continues into the spinal cord okay ma so medulla oblongata it continues as spinal cord through a small hole okay medulla oblongata untundi kada venakala adi spinal cord ga continue avutund anamata ekkadu nunchi pass avutundi it passes through a hole which is called as foramen magnum so it is a hole which is present in the skull of the frog are able to understand ma that's it so it continues into a spinal cord so spinal cord is enclosed where it is enclosed in the vertebral column so in almost all the vertebrates spinal cord is enclosed in the vertebral column itself understood no what is meant by vertebral column we know no ma this region we call it as vertebral column and spinal cord is enclosed in that vertebral column so next coming to sense organs so sense organs how many types of sense organs are present in the frog so sense of touch sense of uh, smell taste vision and hearing okay ma so the organs which are responsible for touch they are called as sensory papillae taste taste buds smell nasal epithelium what is meant by epithelium we know no so the outermost layer of uh, what you call some of the organs even the digestive system also that is made up of a layer of muscles which is called as epithelium no ma so here also in the case of frog also the nose is made up of epithelium and that is called as nasal epithelium so through which it smells next for vision which is responsible eyes are responsible for vision okay and hearing so hearing there is a tympanum with an internal ears so for the frog you cannot see the ears which we have so there will be a membrane which vibrates clear no ma it senses the vibrations in the atmosphere and sensing that vibrations the brain of the frog it analyzes what is the type of sound it is getting are able to understand we do have a vibrating structure no but it is present very inside very deep inside the ear but for the case of frog it is present on the outside surface itself clear and ears are internal okay so eyes are a pair of spherical structures situated in the orbit so where eyes are situated ma they are situated in a orbit like of arrangement so and they are simple eyes what is meant by simple eyes there is only one eye single unit of eye if it is present it is called as simple eye compound eyes also present no for example previously we studied about uh, cockroach and dragon fly they have compound eyes are able to understand ma some 2000 very simple eyes they make a compound eye but in the case of frog we have a simple eye itself so this is one important bit here so ear is the organ of hearing as well as balancing also but still we don't have a clarity about this one but we study that ear behaves like a organ of hearing as well as balancing also so this is about sense organs in the case of frog so then reproductive system so male reproductive system we will study first of all then we will go to female reproductive system clear ma see ma here in the case of the male reproductive system of the frog we have this testis here testis is present no ma 
So testis it opens into the kidney directly. In the case of uh, male frog, are you able to understand, ma? In the case of female frog, ovary will be present. Are you able to understand? And there is no connection between ovary and the kidney. So this is another important bit which you should remember in the case of frogs. Are you able to understand? So this testis it opens into what? It opens into kidney. But in the case of female frog, ovaries will be there, which releases the eggs. But this doesn't open into the uh, what you called the kidney. Are you able to understand, ma? So this testis it releases the sperms. Sperms passes through a passage inside the kidney. Then it opens into the cloaca, cloaca of the frog. But in the case of uh, female frog, the eggs which are released, that doesn't pass through the kidney. They have a via passage, and directly that passage opens into the cloaca. So this is a difference in the case of male frog and a female frog. Are able to understand what? So see here. So a pair of yellowish ovoid testis is present. What is meant by ovoid testis? Ovoid testis means oval shape, or you can call it as egg-shaped testis are present. Clear, no ma? Adhered to the upper part of kidneys by a double fold of peritoneum, which is also called as mesarchium. Adhered means what? Joint. Adhered means joined onto the top of the kidneys by what? By a membranous structure. And what is the name of that membrane? Peritoneum. It is also called as mesorchium. Are able to understand? Ma? Peritoneum is the name of a membrane. Are able to understand? So these are all important bits, ma. So, so therefore, what we have understood here, testis is attached to top part of the kidney through a layer which is called as peritoneum, which is also called as mesorchium. So testis. It opens into vasa efferentia, which are 10 to 12 in number. So, how many number of vasa efferentia are present? 10 to 12. They again enter into kidneys. Vasa efferentia opens into kidneys. Kidneys opens into Bidder's canal. Bidder's canal opens into urinogenital duct. It finally opens into the cloaca. Okay, ma? So, this sequence also can be asked in the examination. This sequence could have this is all is important. Clear number? So, this structure you are seeing here, no? This structure, this is called as cloaca here. Are you able to understand, ma? Cloaca, then cloaca has the small hole also. This hole which is present here, this is called as cloacal aperture also. Okay, ma? So, through this only, sperms also, fecal matter also gets discharged from the body of this frog. Male frog. Understood, Dama? So, testis opens into what? Vasa efferentia. Then it opens into kidneys. Then it opens into Bidder's canal. Then urinogenital duct. Then it opens into the cloaca. This is the sequence. Clear, no? So, cloaca is a small median chamber. It is a very small chamber, Ma. Clear? It is used to pass the fecal matter also, urine also, as well as sperms also. So, this point also you should remember. So, cloaca is responsible for discharging fecal matter also, urine also, as well as sperms also. Understood, no? That's it. So, here you can see the different parts. Ma. Cloaca is present, cloacal aperture is present. So, this is the urinary bladder which stores the urine. And a uh, passage called rectum is also present here. This is the rectum. Clear, no? Then you have this adrenal gland. Testis is present. And these testes, they are attached to the kidneys. And attached to this testes, you have a body which is called as a fat bodies also. And 10 to 12 pairs of, 10 to 12 number of vasa efferentia are also present. So these are the different parts. Okay? Now see. Female reproductive system. So here also a pair of ovaries are present. So in the case of uh, male also, two uh, testes are present. Here also two ovaries are present. So, this is one important bit. There is no functional connection between the kidneys. Sorry, functional connection with the kidneys. But uh, these testes in the case of male frog, they were connected with kidneys. But here there is no such connection. So, from the kidney, from the ovaries, ov duct will start. Ovaries nunchi m start out on the tube will start, which is called as ov duct from the ovaries. And it opens into the cloaca separately. That means all this passage which is followed in the case of male frog, that is not followed here. Directly, this ovum or ova, it is released into the oviduct and oviduct releases this X directly into the cloaca. 
From there, it is released into the water, and in the case of frog, external fertilization will happen. Are you able to understand? So, a mature female lay 2,500 to 3,000 ova at a time. This may be another important bit. Clear? Fertilization is external and takes place in water. There is no concept of internal fertilization here. Total fertilization takes place in water itself. Because ovum, it is released by the female frog into the water itself directly. There fertilization will happen. So, and there is a larval stage also. So, this larva of this frog, uh, it just appears like a small fish itself. Understood, no? So, the larva, the, this is the larval stage of this frog. Understood, no? It just appears like a fish itself. And... Uh, so therefore, this type, this type of development, what you call this, if any larval stage is present, indirect development. So this is also an important bit here. Clear, ma? So we have to write development is what? Development is indirect. Indirect development means there is a larval stage, and from that, an adult frog will develop. Human beings are direct development or indirect development. Direct development only, no, we don't have a larva stage. Mudasir Mundu Chinna Pampila Lagunda Malli Manchika Lagada. Previously also he was in the shape of human only, now also in the shape of human only. Clear no So development involves a larval stage, which is called as a tadpole. So tadpole undergoes metamorphosis to form adult. So this is another important bit. Tadpole undergoes what? Metamorphosis. What is metamorphosis, ma? So, a sudden change in shape and size is called as metamorphosis. So, initially it looks like a fish, no but suddenly it grows into a frog. Are you able to understand? So, this type of indirect development stage, which is called as metamorphosis. So, metamorphosis is present in the case of frog. Okay? That's it. So, that completes the topic which is called as structural organization of animals. So, tomorrow we will start the topic of cell, the unit of life. Clear, ma? So, you can see important bits in the same way. Hmm? So, you need to start the cell cycle. Clear, no? So, whatever uh, important points I have written, VT to party, you can see it in the same way. It's easy to do. You can see it in the But for you, it will be very interesting to understand. Understood, Noma? We do direct NCRT, Zedinar, and TVN on the Okay?